Welcome into your weekly AMA for the Denver Broncos, brought to you by Mile High Sports. I am Kim Becker. He is Cody Rourke, and we are here to answer the questions you all may have now that the Denver Broncos, I wanted to say regular season, but it's season is over. Cody, um, <laughs> uh, no postseason, obviously, for the Broncos this year. Hopefully that changes next year. I know we've all said that for the last couple of seasons, but nonetheless, a probably pretty exciting off season. At least we know there will be a lot going on with the head coach search. So we'll definitely get into that. But uh, first of all, we've got some questions here from fans after week 18 has concluded. Excited to hear what you think first though, Cody, about that last game. You and I talked about the Chargers game and what a win would mean for the Denver Broncos, especially to wrap up their season here at home. So kind of give us your main takeaway ways from week 18 for the Broncos win. I mean, you couldn't have asked them to go out on a better note. Um, you know, for them, the last couple of weeks, you know, they fired Nathaniel Hackett 15 games into the season in his first year. And I mean, that has an impact. That definitely does have an impact on how you do things because then you have Jerry Rosberg, a guy who, you know, has kind of really been behind the scenes for Denver this year, has been in the locker room. Now he's the guy in charge and he's telling everybody like, hey, we're changing the way we're, we've been doing things. Like we're not doing it this way anymore. And anytime you do that, there is always some resistance in certain things like that. But players saw that, hey, you know what? This worked. Like we saw them compete. They simplified the offense. The offense put up over 50 points in two games, something. I mean, I, I think at one point of the season, they didn't have 50 points or over 50 points scored, I think, through the first five or six weeks combined. So... Uh, you know, they went out on a high note. This is a locker room that stuck together through a lot of drama and a lot of outside national media narratives that, you know, can uh, when you're losing, it can creep up into the locker room. They they did a really good job sticking together. And what better way than being a team that's literally going to the playoffs? They played their starters like it'd be different if like, OK, you know, the Chargers, they rested their stars. No, the Chargers played the starters through four quarters. And Justin Herbert was still you know, preparing to throw the ball in the fourth quarter. And then, you know, eventually when Denver scored that other touchdown, they're like, all right, hey, it's getting away from us a little bit. Let's pull Justin out. But, I mean, if you're a Chargers fan right now, you have to feel like, oh, gosh, like what the heck is going on? Because they get to play in the playoffs this week against Jacksonville, but Mike Williams got hurt, and he got beat by a Denver team. So I, I think that's a great thing for Denver, that they beat a team that's in the playoffs. They compete. They almost beat another team that's in the place in the Kansas City Chiefs the yeah. week prior. So – you know, like I said, everyone's like, oh, well, there's no moral victories in the NFL. You know what? You got to feel good if you're a yeah. Broncos fan to just see them come together the last couple of weeks and actually play better football, football that everybody expected them to play all season long. Yeah, and seeing what the offense is capable of should make everybody feel a lot better heading into the offseason because now you know, obviously, they're committed to Russell Wilson for the foreseeable future. If they can get a head coach that will really jive with him and help the offense in general, an offensive-minded head coach or whatever it may be, a very good offensive coordinator at the very least there, it's definitely – Got a few high hopes for us. I'm not going to get too excited like I was last <laughs> offseason because we all know how that can change things. But, yes, at least, like you said, going out on a high note for sure here. Um, I want to start with this first question from Brian. It's not really a question. It's more of a statement, Cody. It's a demand. But I really like it. Describe the Broncos season in one word. Oh, kind of putting me on the spot here, Brian. What the heck, man? Not Brian, um, I like it. Thank you, Brian. I feel like there's a multitude of words we could use. You know, I think disappointing could be one, but I think for me, I'm going to take it a, a step. I'm going to say unexpected. Okay. Unexpected is how this season went for Denver because not one person in the entire universe thought that things would go the way that they did for Denver this season. I mean, we all thought coming into the off season, Oh, Hey, Denver's back in the playoff conversation. They're back in their, they're in pot, the possible Super Bowl contention conversation. And I think from week one, we're like, Oh shoot. Like, what the heck is going on? Week two against the Texans, we're like, what is going on with this Denver team? Week three, like, oh, they beat the 49ers in a close, gritty, hard-fought game. Okay, this is the team that we wanted to see. We want to see the offense play better, but this is this is what a playoff team does. They win the the, the really tightly contested claw them out games. And then week four, you lose to the Raiders. Week five, the overtime loss to the Indianapolis Colts. Week six, you lose in overtime to the Los Angeles Chargers due to a muff punt in a game that you should have won. Uh, and just goes on and on and on and on from that standpoint there. And, and the reality is, is nobody expected the season to go this way forever. So for me, unexpected probably summarizes it perfectly. Very good. Very good. And very good memory there, Cody. That was impressive. <laughs> All right. We'll keep going here with Jeremy. What was the silver lining of this season? We talked a little bit about how the last two games went and how the season ended, but maybe thinking outside of the box a little bit, what's your silver lining for the season? 
Jeremy, the silver lining, right? There's going to be some fans like, oh, there's no silver lining. There's always a silver lining, right? It, it, it's all about perspective and how you choose to look at things. So, Jeremy, if I had to say what the silver lining was for Denver this season, I'd say Jerry Judy. Like J- okay. Jerry Judy emerging and breaking onto the scene because we saw it week one. He had the 67-yard touchdown catch from Russell Wilson. He finished that game, I think, with four catches for 102 yards. And then week two against the Texans, he, he got hurt. He, he got, you know, he, he fell on the ball and he had a rib injury that held him out of action. The rest of the game came back against San Francisco, you know, had some targets, but Russell Wilson just couldn't find him. So Cortland Sutton really emerged as Russell Wilson's security blanket. And then week seven, we started to really see against the New York Jets. Now, Russ was out in this game. Brett Rippon was standing in for him. But we saw that, OK, hey, get Jerry Judy working in some one on one matchups across the middle of the field. Isolate him, in, you know, in some one on one situations. Don't just keep him on the outside. Move him around. You could put him outside, put him inside but just move jerry and let him work that was a little bit of the formula that was revealed and then obviously for him he finished the year i think in the last five games 492 total yards receiving obviously the three touchdown catches he finishes with a career high 972 yards in his career not to mention on top of that a career high in touchdown catches with six for me i think the blueprint is revealed jerry judy is the team's best playmaker on offense and that's not a slight to anybody else but he is your prominent guy he is the guy that will open up opportunities for everybody else because he's the most dangerous guy on the field so jerry judy's emergence in my opinion is the silver lining of the season i like that a lot you know i gotta give credit if i'm looking at the silver lining to the defense though the way that yeah. they played you know through the season obviously this is no secret to anybody it's not like i'm coming up with information here that no one knows about it just I always just think about the defense, especially with the way that the offense was playing through the majority of the season and how they, I mean, they stood their ground. They did what they needed to do. They were an amazing unit, you know, great on paper, great in the league, looking at rankings there. And they were a huge part to some of those games not being complete blowouts. So I would say shout out also to the defense. They were a pretty good silver lining as well there. Yeah, no spot on. Justin Simmons missed five games and had the most forced turnovers by any player in the NFL. Yeah. And for him, he, he missed five games, and he had six interceptions, which was tied for the league lead this year. So he's obviously an interception leader this year. Uh, you know, I think he's tied like four or five other people. Like, there, that's crazy how many people had that many interceptions. But for him to do it while missing five games, on top of that, accounting for two forced fumbles, I mean, he is a guy that just created opportunities for Denver. Like, he, he forced nine total, you know, possibilities for turnovers i think one of them didn't get recovered by denver uh he's a fantastic player and honestly if he if he didn't miss a game i think he probably would have had the nfl lead in interceptions possibly and you can make an argument he could be a defensive player of the year candidate but i do hope to see justin simmons get some all pro recognition from voters this year absolutely i agree with you okay next up we have a question from brie what was the lowest of the lows this season Golly, y'all are making me kind of go into my brain bank here. I might, I might run out of memory here for this. There were a lot of low moments for Denver this season. I think, I mean, I feel like we can name so many, right? But I feel like just like the the lowest of the absolute lows that summarize the season. I I felt like for me covering a team, you know, it's like. I have no, like if they win, it's awesome because, you know, the the players are excited. Fans are excited when they lose, you know, it's a little tougher because it's like, you know, Hey, like the locker room's quiet. Um, Fans are angry. So I would say like the one game that made me just feel like, what am I doing? Like, what is going on? It was Christmas day and that's several weeks ago. And this led to Nathaniel Hackett getting fired. I mean, Denver just came out flat. Russell Wilson's first three pass attempts, two of them were intercepted. They were down 17 nothing. You had obviously some sideline spats, just some discombobulation, just a completely undisciplined effort by Denver, and things just kind of collapsed there, which led to the firing of Nathaniel Hackett. I would say that Christmas Day game was the lowest of the lows. I'll throw some honorable mentions in there. I think the loss, the injuries to Tim Patrick in training camp, that's a huge one. Losing Javante Williams in week four to a torn ACL, that was a big one. Week five, losing Garrett Bowles and Ronald Darby to season-ending injuries, that was also up there. Um yeah, I mean, the guys, there's so many. There's so many low moments of the season. But I would have to say, like, peak would probably be that Christmas Day blowout against the Rams. The Valley. The Valley. Oh, the, That's the, the Valley. The floor. I mean, at rock bottom had a floor at that point. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. This is a bummer because here I am, like, going into this AMA thinking, gosh, this is going to be so positive. We're going to talk about what's ahead and how the season ended and, you know, what the offseason entails. But, um, 
all these questions are like, that's coming. I promise. Cool? What's the worst? Give me a word. But, but no, I love it. Hopefully we can like, you know, kind of get this one out of the way We're we're, we're addressing it now and we'll put it behind us and moving forward from starting from next week, we'll have all positives. And with that said, here's another question for you. When did you know things were going downhill? <laughs> I, I, okay. So I'm starting to really believe that this AMA is like Broncos countries, like, therapy session to kind of talk about some of the trauma right and i think i think okay i I think it's fair you have to find a way to deal with the trauma of the season when did you know that things were going downhill Uh, you well you know i think week four i i felt kind of like man this kind of stinks because like you know i think the injury to javante williams sucked the air out of the Broncos sales a little bit. The defense didn't really struggle. Josh Jacobs had, I think, over 140 yards on the ground. He had two rushing touchdowns. And they just, you know, it was just one of those games where the offense put up points, but the defense couldn't get any stops. And the Javante Williams injury, Randy Gregory injury, that really kind of cemented it. But I'd say like the next week really kind of, in my mind, painted the picture. Okay, this is not going to be the season we had hoped for. And I think the Colts game on Thursday night football, Overtime, I think that's when things really started to go downhill. I mean, you had fans leaving the stadium before overtime even began. Russell Wilson threw two really, really bad interceptions in this game. Uh, you know, like I said, you lose Ronald Darby, you lose Garrett Bowles. It just, I was like, all right, you, you don't have Javante Williams. You have Melvin Gordon, who, you know, it's still struggle with fumbles. In my opinion, I was like, yeah, week week five was the moment I knew things were going downhill and the schedule wasn't going to get any easier for Denver. So that was, uh, yeah, I'd say that was probably the icing on the cake there. That's probably the moment. Yeah, I think the moment that I start, well, during the Seahawks game in week one, I was like, this is not happening. You know, oh, yeah. I was like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Like, Is this just first game me. jitters? Or, yeah, on uh, everything I was saying in the offseason, everything I was so excited about, I was like, holy cow, holy cow. But then it was the first home game when the – fans started counting down the play clock. Oh, That's yeah. when I was like, oh, this is not going to be the next 18 weeks that I had anticipated. That was scary. Like, I still remember watching it being like, no, 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 this is so embarrassing. So, yeah, um, week five for sure definitely totally makes sense on that one. But I think we got little inklings the first couple of weeks, which were not fun. But we will wrap this up with a positive question. Yes. Manilo, what Something is one thing that should give Broncos fans <laughs> hope? Going into next year, Kobe. I'll say this. You know, Monday, we obviously, we got to go to the locker room and we got to talk to guys. You know, I I was in the locker room Sunday after the game, Monday morning when they were cleaning out and preparing, obviously, for the offseason. And I just, you know, I went around and I was just talking to players and I was asking them, you know, what is one thing they learned about themselves this okay. year? Because obviously this year didn't go how they wanted. But the thing that kind of stood out to me was – so many of the responses that I got weren't about like them. They're like, you know, what I learned is that we, with everything that we went through this season, with all the, the narratives from the outside, from people who don't really know what's going on on the inside. He said that we stuck together as, as a team, like he, Andrew Beck fullback told me, he said, my wife even asked me the same question. And he said, I can honestly tell you with everything that we went through this year, I can truly say, and I can look at every single guy in this locker room on offense, defense, or special teams and say that I love these guys. Like, we stuck together. We had each other's backs. So, for me, I think a a bright spot and a silver lining going into next year is something that I think is exciting, I think has value, like significant value. The Broncos' locker room culture is strong. It is intact, right? The wins and losses didn't come the way that anybody had hoped for, but you have really good leaders in there. Russell Wilson's a great leader. I talked to various players, and I said, look, that guy went through so much from, you know, media. He was a media punching bag, and he never changed the way he did things. Like, he was the first in, last to leave, but he was always a leader. He never changed who he was. I, I think that speaks volumes, right? For how bad this season went, the locker room culture is intact. So whoever they hire as their next head coach, they don't have to come in and change the culture inside the locker room. The, whoever the next head coach is has to come in and change the culture on the field when it comes to games on Sunday, and that's winning. Winning games will change that losing culture on the field that we have seen. So I, I think that Denver has ingredients. They have the formula, I think, to be very good. I, I think that coaching matters, and I think we saw that in the final two weeks. Absolutely. All right, Cody. Well, thanks so much. That was a good note to end on there. And hopefully that was our one therapy session. And now we can put that 2022 season behind us.
this. I'm sure we'll have you know some questions about what's going on in the playoffs the next couple of weeks. Obviously, there the season is um over for the regular season, but we've got an exciting few weeks of postseason ahead of us. It'll be interesting to see where some of those AFC West guys, I guess just the Chargers and the Chiefs, right, end up, and then the rest of the AFC, what goes Hope down. Hope they all lose. Gosh, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but exciting nonetheless, Cody. Thank you so much to everybody tuning in. Thank you also for sending in your questions, for listening, and for following us here at Mile High Sports. Of course, make sure that you are following Cody at Cody Work NFL so that you can see that tweet that he sends out every week asking what questions you may have, and we will address them right here every Wednesday at 3.30. Cody, I will see you next week. Looking forward to it, Kim. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country.